Alina writes the numbers one to nine uh, on separate cards, one number per card. She wishes to divide the cards into three groups of three cards so that the sum of the numbers in each group will be the same. And how many ways can this be done? Okay. So first of all, the sum, the total sum of all the cards if, uh, is 45, right? And if you're going to divide it into three, then 45 divided by 3, 15 would be the sum for each group of three cards. So we got to figure that out. Okay. So we have group A, group B, and group C, and each group has three cards. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. So, all right. So let's start. I'm going to start actually with the nine. If I have a 9 and I've got to make a sum of 15, I've got to create another 6, so 1 and 5. Let's do this again. If I have a 9, can I do another 2 and 4? Uh, I can't do 3 and 3 because I can't use the same number twice. So I've exhausted my 9s. That's the only way in, if we have a 9 in there, the only way the sum of those three cards can be 15. Okay, so I've used up uh, 9. Now let's go for the 8. If I want to make a sum of 15, the next two cards have to add up to 7. So 1 and 6, is that, does that work? Yeah, 1 and 6 works. Oh, but I can't put 1 here because the 1's already here. Oh, okay. So I could probably put the 1 and 6 here because I can't duplicate the cards, right? Because each card, each number can only be used once. So what? how else can I do uh, 15? 2 and 4? Uh, is 2 and 4? No, no, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to add up to 7, so 3 and 4. Yeah, 3 and 3 and 4 will work. And also, I don't duplicate anything that's here. Okay, so, so far, so good. Now we got to put the 7 in. And the sum is 15, so the next two numbers have to add up to 8. So 1 and 7, but I can't do that because the seven's already been used. 2 and 6. And this is great because this doesn't interfere with any of the numbers, so this works. Let's try again. 7, uh, okay, 1 and 7 can't do, 2 and 6, 3 and 5, 3 and 5, yeah, because that doesn't interfere, so there you go, and I think this is the only two ways, you can kind of fiddle around and see if you can get anything else, but I don't think you can, so C is the only choice here. In a sequence of positive numbers, Integers, each term after the second is the product of the previous two terms. The sixth is 4,000. What is the first term? So you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And they're saying this is 4,000. And then let's just say this is A and this is B. So after the second, the product is uh, previous two terms. So this one would be A times B. This one would be this times that. So it would be A times B squared. And this one would be this times that, which is a squared b3. And this one is this times this, which is essentially a3 b5. So basically what I've concluded is that 4,000 is equal to a3 b5. OK, great. But how does that help me figure out what's a? Because I have to figure out the first term, which is a. Well, I think what you do is you break this up into prime factors. 4,000 broken up into its prime factorization, I believe, is uh, 2 to the power of 5 times 5 to the power of 3. Yeah, you can do that. You know, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 5 times 5, I believe. And then you just match it up. And you can probably see that the A is 2 and the B is 5. So this is 2 and this is 5. So the answer to number 22 is, uh, hold on, did I mess this up? Uh, yeah, I did mess it up. Sorry about that. No, it's a good thing, right? Because A to the power of 3, it's this one. Aha. Uh -huh. And B to the power of 5, so B is 2. Yeah, well, it's, maybe it's a good thing that I did that to show you that sometimes you can mix things up the wrong way. So the A is the 5 and the B is the 2. So the answer to number 22 is D.
Each square in a 3x3 grid is randomly filled with one of the four gray and white tiles shown below on the right. What is the probability that the tile would contain a large gray diamond in one of the smaller 2x2 two two grids below the example of such small grid? Okay. All right. Okay, so how do we approach this? Um, okay. So let's take it just one step at a time here. This one, there's a one in four chance of that coming from this group of four. This one, again, there's a one in four chance of that particular tile coming from that group of four. And similarly, there's a one in four chance of that being selected and a one in four chance of that being selected. So the total probability is 1 over 4 uh, to the power of 4. Now what goes in here, 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 here is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. Anything. You can put in anything. So those probabilities, anything can go. So probability there is 1 of each of those. But here's the thing. This uh, shape can also be here. See? In this one, it's in this part of the square but it could also be there or it could also be up here right or it could also be over here if you can understand so there's four possible places so what we do is we take this guy and we have to multiply it by four and when you do really what you just get is four to the power of three and that's one over 64 i believe so 23 is c Isosceles triangle ABC has equal side lengths AB and BC. In figures below, segments are drawn parallel to AC so that the shaded portions of ABC have the same area. The heights of the two unshaded portions are 11 and 5 units respectively. What is the height H of ABC? So I, I think the key to this question is to figure out, or not figure out, but to remember a formula that the ratio of heights... squared is equal to the ratio of areas. And this is true in similar triangles. So I will explain what that means. So these guys are similar triangles. So for example, if I were to label them, well, they're already labeled, right? So if I were to uh, uh, look at, say, the area of um, this one, A, B, C, D, E, and then we have A, B, C, um, D, E, we can call F and G here, these points. So if I just look at this guy over here, this this uh, triangle, if I look at the ratio of the hi uh, heights, the BDE triangle over the full BAC triangle like that, the ratio of the heights, well, the first one has a height of 11, and the second one is the full height, which is represented by H. Now, I if I square that, right, because you got to square it, that is equivalent to the ratio of the areas. And the ratio of the areas, well, I don't know yet, but we'll figure it out, BDE and BAC. Okay. Now, uh, like I said, I, I don't know yet, but uh, what we can conclude is that 11 squared is 121, and 8 squared, uh, well, when you square the H, it's 8 squared. So, so far, that's all pretty much I can get from that. But if you look at uh, D. E, B, C, right, this guy, this D, E, oh, sorry, D, E, um, D, E, C, A, I guess, this guy, so D, E, C, A, that is the same as the full triangle, which would be um, B, A, C, 
minus that small one up top, which is B D E. So according to our little ratio, that would be uh, H squared minus 121. Okay, so hopefully you got that. And hopefully I labeled this correctly, D E C A, yeah, I think so. Now we do the exact same kind of story over on this side. So exactly what I did, but just on the other triangle. So when we do over on the other side, we get the following. Uh, this time I'm doing, let's see here, I'm comparing which two, two. I'm comparing VFG to the full one, right? BAC. And then that basically is equivalent to the height of BFG would be 11, sorry, H minus 5. H minus 5. And then 5 is the height. And then, of course, I got to square it. Don't forget, you got to square it. And that's equivalent to the areas BFG or BAC. Got it? So, very similarly, um, uh, let's see here. Sorry, this should have been an H right here. Sorry about that. That's H. Yeah, because it's BAC, the full triangle. So, that means that this is going to be H minus 5 squared over H squared. You got it? Okay. So, now... Um, um, they told me in the question that the uh, the shaded portion have the same area. Yeah. So this guy and this guy have the same area. Okay, so that, that, okay, I got it now. Okay, I understand. So that means that this guy, DECA, which is this one right here, has the same area as this guy, which is BFG. Okay, so BFG, according to this, is this guy, H minus 5 squared. Okay, so there we go. So since this is equal to this, this is equal to that. Okay. So that would mean that h minus 5 squared is equivalent to h squared minus 121. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's how we would do this. So let's uh, uh, expand this. So we get minus 10h plus 25, h squared minus 121. And the h, squ h squareds cancel. 10h comes up here. This becomes 146, and therefore h is 14.6. Okay, so that would mean A is the answer to number 24. Fifteen integers, A1 through A15, are arranged in order on a number line. The integers are equally spaced and have the property that A1 is between 1 and 10 inclusive, A2 between 13 and 20 inclusive, and A15 between 241 and 215 inclusive. The sum of the digits of A14 are... Okay, so... I've got to, hmm, I've got to equally space these out. And there's 15 of them, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, like that. And they're equally spaced. So the, like this was A1, A2, A3, and, and you guys get the idea, A14. So they're equally spaced. So like this. Okay, got it. Okay, and then we got these parameters that A1 is between 1 and 10. So if, like, if this number line is extended, then A, the number 1 is somewhere here. I don't know where it is. And then 10... Uh, is somewhere here. Uh, somewhere here, although this is certainly not drawn to scale. 
and then so the number one is here number 10 is here let's say and then a2 is between 13 and 20 so 13 is let's say here and the 20 is let's say here and very similarly the a15 is between 241 and 250 so 241 uh, somewhere here and then 250 is out there somewhere wherever doesn't really matter okay so we got to figure out a14 huh okay so how do we do this here well since they're equally spaced we got to figure out what is that number how many apart uh, let's see here uh, well how many spaces are there first of all there's 14 spaces right from there to there is one two and then three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen four yeah fourteen so fourteen spaces uh, of what now we got to make sure uh, that we are counting down then we don't count below one because one is here Okay, so let's see here. Wow, well, 241 uh, divided by the 14 is approximately 17 something. So let's say if there was, if each of these was 17, um, I'm guessing. I mean, I, I don't know, but let's say. So how many would that be? So 14 times 17 would be 238. Okay, and this might work. So let's see. Uh, since A15, I'm just going to call it 242. I don't know what it is. And let's count back 17. Um, you see what I'm doing there? Yeah, so 241 minus 17 is 224. And then if I bring it all the way down to here, I think this is going to be 3. Yeah, and this would be 20. Yeah. So what I did there was I kind of assumed that A15, since it's giving me a range between 241 and 250 inclusive, I said, okay, let's make A15 equal to 241. And then they got to be evenly spaced. So I approximated, if I take that 241 and divide by the 14 spaces, right, between these 15 numbers, I get approximately 17. So then what I did was I started counting back 17 from 241, and I filled them all in, 224, 207, 190, all the way down to 3. And then I checked to see if my, my parameters are satisfied. If I'm going to make my A1 3, is it satisfy that inequality? And the answer is yes. If I make my A2 20, does it satisfy that? Yeah, it does. It's equal to 20. So then all my conditions are satisfied. Now that what they're saying is what are the sum of the digits of A14? So what is A14? That I have figured out to be 2 to 4. Sum of the digits would be 2 plus 2 plus 4, which is 8. And therefore, number 25 is A.